Over the past few months, there has been a tremendous increase for the demand of Pokemon trading cards. I don't know if it's just all collection, people trying to buy and then sell for a profit to people who actually play, but there's been a lot of interest in the game. And after getting a comment on one of my other videos about how to play the Pokemon trading card game, I decided it was time that we make this series. Hey, and welcome to 9Card TCG. I am Nick, and today we are gonna start our series on how to play the Pokemon trading card game. This video will be broken up into four different videos because there is just way too much information to put into any one video that someone will sit and watch. So we're gonna break it up into four videos. Today's video is gonna be basic rules, game setup, and then the different types of cards that you'll find in the Pokemon trading card game. Each player is going to start with a deck of exactly 60 cards. To start the game, you'll shuffle your deck and draw seven cards. Place a Pokemon into the active spot, then place any additional Pokemon onto your bench. You can have up to five Pokemon on your bench at any given moment. However, you can't just play any Pokemon you want. They do have to be what's called a basic Pokemon. We'll cover basic and evolution Pokemon a little bit later. Once you have your Pokemon set, take the top six cards of your deck without looking at them and put them off to the side. These are called your prize cards. The object of the game is to knock out your opponent's Pokemon to collect your prize cards. Collect all six prize cards before your opponent to win the game. There are other ways to win, but for now, since getting all six prizes is usually the most common way someone wins, that's what we're gonna focus on. We'll talk about other win conditions later on. So how do we go about knocking out our opponent's Pokemon to collect your prizes? Well, with your own Pokemon. There are various types of Pokemon that you can play, but they all have the same information. So let's look at the anatomy of a Pokemon card. Firstly, you have the name. Then you have the hit points called HP, which tells you how much damage a Pokemon can take before being knocked out. Some Pokemon have abilities. These abilities have specific effects that you can use during the game. You also have the Pokemon's attacks then including the damage and effects that attack may have. It also states if your Pokemon has any weaknesses or resistances. This is important because your Pokemon may take more or less damage from a specific type of Pokemon. For example, this fighting type Pokemon, noted by the fist symbol, is weak to psychic types, noted by the eyeball symbol. So if you were to take, say, 100 damage from a Psychic type Pokemon, because it tells you Psychic types do times two damage, you would actually take 200 damage, which is way more. So it's really important to know if your Pokemon has any weaknesses or resistances so you can watch out for those during the course of the game. And finally, you have the Retreat Cost. The Retreat Cost is what I have to pay to switch this Pokemon with a different Pokemon from my bench. You can only have one Pokemon in the active spot at once, so if you want to use the attacks or certain abilities of different Pokemon, you have to switch them with the Pokemon in your active spot currently. If you're wondering about the symbols next to the attack, I didn't forget about them. We're going to cover them shortly. We mentioned earlier that you could only play basic Pokemon onto the field, so how do you play your evolution Pokemon? In order to play evolution Pokemon, the appropriate basic Pokemon has to be on the bench for one full turn. For example, I put Houndor onto the bench during my turn. I cannot evolve it into Houndoom the second I put it onto the bench. I have to finish my turn. My opponent will then take their turn. And when it becomes my turn again, then I can evolve into Houndoom. Don't worry if you don't know exactly what Pokemon evolved to or from what. The card does a really good job of telling you what Pokemon evolves into what or from what rather. So you can see on the top left corner, it tells you evolves from Houndor. It has a little picture of it and there you go. So the Pokemon that I just showed, this Houndoom, is what we call a single prize Pokemon, meaning when it gets knocked out, your opponent takes one of their prize cards. But if we have a name for Pokemon that give one prize, you might be guessing that well, there are Pokemon that give more than one prize, and you would be right. Pokemon V are evolved Pokemon that can be played like basic Pokemon because it says basic Pokemon in the top left corner. So you can play this 
right away at the beginning of the game or at the beginning of your turn when, or whenever it comes into your hand. You don't have to worry about evolving it. These are more powerful Pokemon. They have more HP, they have better attacks, or I should say they have stronger attacks that aren't always better, but you get the idea. If you're ever in doubt, just look at the top left corner. It will tell you that it's a basic Pokemon and they love pumpkin spice lattes, or it might say that it's a stage one or stage two evolution Pokemon, and they're a little bit more mature and prefer cold brews. Pokemon V give two prizes when they're knocked out, but that's not all. Some Pokemon V can evolve into Pokemon V Max. These Pokemon V Max give three prize cards when they're knocked out, so they are definitely a high risk, high reward type of card. They do a ton of damage, they sometimes have really crazy effects, they have a lot of HP, so they're not easy to knock out, but when they do get knocked out, your opponent takes half of their prize cards right away, so it is definitely something to be mindful of. You don't actually have to remember how many prize cards a Pokemon gives up because on the bottom right corner, the card has a rule box. It'll say Pokemon V rule or V max rule, and it tells you how many prize cards that card gives up. If the Pokemon does not have a rule box, it instead has some information about the Pokemon or a little bit of history or something like that, then you know that that is a single prize Pokemon and it only gives, like I said, one prize. So if it says nothing, it's one prize. If it says something else, you follow what the card tells you. Pokemon V and Pokemon V Max are just like single prize Pokemon in that they have all the same elements of a Pokemon card, like the attack, HP, retreat cost, energy requirements, all that kind of stuff. But wait, energy requirements? What is that? In order to use your Pokemon's attacks, you have to have the corresponding energy to use it. These are basic energy cards. They have some symbol on it and they're colored appropriately to match the symbol and you attach these energy cards to your Pokemon. In order to use a specific attack, you have to have the number of energies attached to your Pokemon that the attack states. So for example, to use the impact blow attack, I need to have two of those brown fist energies attached and then one white energy. Now, that white energy is not specifically a white energy. It just means you can use any energy you want. So if you see an energy cost of a white energy, we call that colorless, meaning you could use anything you want. So I can have two brown energies, two or what we call two fighting energies, and anything else, a dark energy, a fire energy, a water energy. I could have three fighting energies. It does not matter. As long as I have two fighting and a third of anything else, I can use that impact blow attack. Something like the beatdown attack on this Urshifu V Max requires three colorless energies. So I can have any three energies I want, and then I can use that uh, beat down attack. It doesn't matter what energies, as long as I have three of them. This is something that uh, I find a little bit funny when I was kind of teaching my wife to play a little bit. She's not much of a card game player and she only plays to humor me, but you know, uh, I was teaching her a little bit how to play and she was hesitant to attack me because she thought when she attacked, she would lose all her energies and she didn't have any more in her hand. And I had to explain to her that no, once you attach an energy onto a Pokemon, it stays there forever until the effect of some other card removes it. So for example, this Urshifu VMAX, the GMAX one blow attack specifically says that I have to discard all the energy off this Pokemon in order to use it. So unless the card tells you to discard energies to use the attack or your opponent plays a card that makes you discard an energy those energies stay onto your pokemon whether you attack you move them to the bench anything like that those energies stay so don't be afraid to attack now before we said that in order to retreat a pokemon you have to pay a cost now now that you know what those white symbols mean you might be able to guess that that's the number of energies that you need to retreat your Pokemon. But retreating and attacking use energies a little different. Attacking requires you to have the appropriate energies attached in order to use the attack. Retreating requires you to discard the number of energies shown. So for example, this Urshifu V Max has three colorless energies attached 
uh, required for its retreat cost. So in order to retreat this Pokemon, I have to discard any three energies I want, and then I can move it from the active spot to the bench. This is called manual retreating. There are cards that allow you to switch a Pokemon from your bench to your active spot without discarding energies. And if again, if it moves from the active to the bench by some card effect, the energies stay with it. But if you retreat it manually like this, you do have to discard the number of energies that the card tells you. Some Pokemon have a higher retreat cost than others. For example, like I said, this Urshifu has three. This Houndour has only one. So retreating Houndour is a lot easier than retreating Single Strike Urshifu V Max. If you see nothing there, if there is no symbols under retreat costs, then it is a free retreat and you don't have to discard any energy in order to retreat that Pokemon. Those are very useful, very powerful. Oftentimes people will include one Pokemon that has free retreat so they can pivot, they can do what's called pivoting uh, where you have a Pokemon in the active spot as like a placeholder. And so you can set up a Pokemon on your bench and then you could free retreat to put a better Pokemon or a Pokemon that's more suited to attack into the active spot when you're ready. Most energy cards are what we call basic energy, and all they do is provide one energy of the type that's shown on the card. So for example, this energy provides one fist energy or one fighting energy. You don't have to necessarily know what the energies are called. The cards will use the symbols, so you never have to know the names. Even cards that, refer that uh, reference energies will use the symbols, so you never have to know the name. When you're playing, there's going to be times where you have more than one energy card in your hand, and you're going to be tempted to just throw them all on your Pokemon and do some big attack, but it doesn't work that way. You can only attach one energy from your hand to your, any one of your Pokemon each turn. So only one energy from your hand has to go to any Pokemon on the bench. So it's not one energy per Pokemon, it's one total. I can't stress that enough. Uh, that's something I've seen new players try to do is they're like, oh, but I only put one energy on this one. So I'm going to put one energy on a different Pokemon. Doesn't work that way. One energy from your hand. Choose wisely which one you use. Obviously, we're, we're talking about basic energy. And if there's basic energy, well, then there must be some other kind of energy. And there is. We have what are called special energy. Now, this energy is a stone fist energy or stone fighting energy and you can see on the top right corner it says special energy these are a little bit different than basic energy they provide a fighting type energy when it's attached to a pokemon but then it has some additional effect this one states that as long as this card is attached to a pokemon your pokemon takes 20 less damage from your opponent's attacks which is really really helpful because then you take less damage and your pokemon might live a little longer so using special energies is really effective however do keep in mind that they're not the same as basic energy and sometimes a card will say search your deck for a basic energy get a basic energy from your discard pile something like that if they are talking about basic energies specifically it is these kind of energies if the card says special energy then you can use something like this the last card type is trainer cards these are really important to setting yourself up to win trainer cards typically make up about half your deck sometimes a little bit more they are really important and they are broken up into four different types of trainers. The first type of trainer we have are item trainers. And all you do is you play the card from your hand onto the field and then you follow the effects of the card. Sometimes there's a, a requirement needed to play the card. In this case, you have to discard a card from your hand in order to play it. So if this quick ball is the only thing you have in your hand, then you cannot play it until you have a second card that you can discard. So sometimes there is some requirement in order to play them. So read the card carefully and make sure that you meet the requirements before playing it. During your turn, you can play as many item cards as you want, as long as you again meet the requirements to play that card. The next type of trainer is still an item, but it's a subtype of item cards called a tool. Pokemon tools are very useful and you play them 
uh, when you play them rather, they go directly on your Pokemon, and those Pokemon gain the effects for as long as the tool is attached to them. Keep in mind that your Pokemon can only have one tool attached at a time, so you can't play this scroll of scorn onto one of your Pokemon and then draw a better tool next turn and say, ooh, I want this tool on that Pokemon. Doesn't work that way. Once the tool is on, it is on unless discarded by some other card effect or the Pokemon is knocked out. But if that happens, you can't attach a tool to it anyway. Next up are stadiums. Stadiums are really interesting and unique cards and they often have pretty good effects. When you play a stadium, they stay on the field like a tool card, but they're not attached to a specific Pokemon. They just stay on the field and you can use the effects whenever appropriate. However, keep in mind that your opponent can use your stadium cards as well. There can only be one stadium in the field at a time. So if I play this Tower of Darkness, I can use its effects. Next turn, my opponent can use its effects and they can play their own stadium, which will remove Tower of Darkness from play, leaving only their stadium. Sometimes the battling of stadiums, playing stadiums back and forth to disrupt your opponent's play is an element of the game and choosing when to play your stadiums is something that's pretty important. And I will almost always recommend that you have some stadium in your deck. The last type of trainer is a supporter. These are usually pretty powerful. As a result, you can only play one per turn. I can't play this Skyla and then also this Professor's Research. I can't play one of each. I can only play one supporter card per turn. Again, like the other cards before, it says on the bottom right hand corner what the rule is. It tells you you can only play one supporter per turn. So use the supporter that you're gonna play very, very wisely. It's also worth noting that when you're playing a game uh, after you set up, one person is going to go first. The person who goes first cannot attack or play a supporter their first turn. So no attacking and no supporters the very first turn. The person who goes second is allowed to do whatever they want. So we're gonna go through a portion of a game just so you get an idea of how a turn or how a portion of a game will work. So I'm gonna start the game. As you can see that it shuffles the deck and I draw seven cards. Um, my opponent did not have any basic Pokemon so I will take one of my basic Pokemon and put it into the active spot if it'll let me actually put it there. Then I can put any additional Pokemon on my bench if I choose. Because my opponent had no basic Pokemon, they had to shuffle their hand, it's called a mulligan, and redraw. After mulligan, I actually get to see what their hand looks like, and then for every time they have to mulligan, I get to draw an extra card if I want, which I will. So now I get an opportunity to put additional Pokemon onto my bench, I will. And now we're ready to go. I drew a card to start the game. Remember, I have four supporters in my hand, Marnie, Professor's Research, and Skyla, but I cannot play them because I went first. So I can attach an energy. I could play this item card if I want. I will, I'll just grab a random evolution Pokemon because that's what the card says to do. After I search my deck, I shuffle the deck and then the card that I played onto the field then goes into the discard pile. And now my turn is over. I will pass to my opponent. They will draw a card, attach energies, play items, supporters, put extra Pokemon on their bench, and then finally attack if they have the energy requirements. I say, and then finally attack because attacking is the very last thing you do. Once you attack and the damage and effects resolve, then your turn is automatically over and it is now my turn. So I drew a card, I can attach an energy, I will, uh, I'll search, I'll use a supporter to find a card, I'm going to find this item card, and then once I get the item card in my hand, I shuffle the deck and I'm going to play it. In order to play this card, we mentioned before, I have to discard a card from my hand. So I could choose any card. I'll choose that one for whatever reason. And I'll find this one specifically says I have to search for a basic Pokemon. So I'm going to find this basic Pokemon and 
add it to my hand. So I will play it onto the bench and I have the evolution for it, but I cannot play it right away. I have to wait one full turn in order to evolve this Hound Door. Now, because it's my second turn, I'm allowed to attack, but I don't meet the energy requirements for Impact Blow. I don't have three, I only have two. So the only thing I can use is Laser Focus. So I will use Laser Focus. I will, its effects is it lets me search my deck for up to two fighting energies and attach it to this Pokemon. I'm only gonna do one and then the effect happens. Now that I technically attacked, even though I didn't do damage, my opponent, my opponent goes, they didn't really do anything, they just attacked, so now my turn is on. I can evolve my Pokemon finally, and now I can start doing effects. I can play this Pokemon. It has an effect that lets me draw cards when it goes from my hand onto the bench. So yes, I will want to do that. I have another energy. Cool. Now I have four energies, more than I need to attack. That's okay. It does not have to be exactly three. I can have three or more. And uh, I'll play my supporter. It does its effect. That's the only supporter I can play. I'll put this stadium into the field. I can use its effect immediately to discard a card to draw two more cards. Here's another evolution. There, now I evolve. Now I'm ready to attack and I can use either attack. If I choose this one, I have to, once I do the damage, I have to discard all the energies from that Pokemon and start fresh. Once I had to knock down my opponent's Pokemon, because it was a single prize Pokemon, remember it does not have the rule box, then I can take one of my prizes. It does not matter which one I take. I choose the prize card. Once I go from six to zero, I do win. And that's it for the tutorial. That's, you just go back and forth until you do exactly that. I wanna end this video by talking a little bit about status conditions. You might come across a card that says when you attack or when you play this card, your opponent's Pokemon is now burned or poisoned or whatever. So we wanna talk about status conditions just for a second so that if you come across them, you know how to deal with them and you can start playing immediately. The first one we'll talk about is burn. When you first get burned, you take 20 damage at the end of the turn, then you flip a coin. If it's heads, you're cured of burn. If it's tails, then you stay burned, and at the end of the next turn, you take 20 more damage. You flip a coin. If heads, you're cured of burn. If tails, you repeat the process until your Pokemon is either knocked out or cured of burn somehow. Poison is similar to burn. You take only 10 damage, but you don't flip a coin to get cured every turn. You just stay poisoned until you're healed somehow. Paralyzed is really easy. It's just for the turn. Your Pokemon can't attack, retreat, use abilities, or really do anything anything it just kind of sits there for the turn at the end of the turn your pokemon is returned to normal and you can do everything on your following turn being asleep is just like being paralyzed you're not able to attack you're not able to retreat you can't use your abilities and you stay asleep until you flip a coin to wake you up so it's like burn at the end of every turn you flip a coin if heads you wake up if tails you stay asleep until the end of the next turn. For burn and asleep, it happens at the end of each turn, not at the end of your turn. When you buy pro certain products, they come with markers to indicate burn and poison. So you, can, you don't have to remember, is my Pokemon poison that I flip a heads last turn? You throw these markers on top of the Pokemon to signify their status conditions. Your Pokemon, they're fine, they're regular. Then when they are asleep, or paralyzed, you turn them this way. If they're paralyzed at the end of the turn, you flip them back. If they're asleep, then you flip your coin. If you roll a heads or you flip a heads, then boom, they go back. If they're tails, they stay asleep. The very last status condition is confusion. To indicate confusion, your Pokemon card will be placed upside down. In all confusion does is you have to flip a coin in order to use your attack. You can attack, you can retreat, 
you can use your ability however when you make your attack you have to flip a coin if it's heads your attack goes through normally if it's tails then you take 30 damage to yourself flipping a coin heads does not relieve you of your confusion you stay confused until you're healed now i've said until you're healed somehow a couple of times for every status condition pretty much so how do you actually cure yourself of a status condition especially ones that like poison and confusion that don't go away from flipping a coin the answer is one of three things you can either evolve your pokemon if your pokemon evolves then it's cured of all status conditions but it does maintain any damage and any energy cards and tools whatever that is uh, associated with the card at the time you evolve it it just clears status conditions so that's way one method number two is that you retreat your pokemon to the bench sometimes like if they're asleep or they're paralyzed you can't retreat so you have to move them to the bench by the effect of some other card but for burn poison confusion you are allowed to manually retreat put your pokemon on the bench and they will be cured of their status condition and the final way is to just play a card that gets rid of status conditions uh there are some cards that uh prevent you from getting status conditions there are some cards that heal status conditions if you have them uh there's a few different ways of dealing with them i will say status conditions are not that common there's only a couple of decks that really deal with status conditions so you don't have to do uh worry too much about it and just a few final notes to get you started i said before that your deck has to have exactly 60 cards but what about cards like this one how many of this can i have in my deck well the answer is four you are allowed to have up to four copies of any one card with the exception of basic energies you're allowed to have as many basic energies as you want and i'm emphasizing basic because that energy rule does not apply to special energies but that's all you need to know to get started on playing today if you enjoyed this video which i hope you did don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and especially comment and like on this video comments and likes are what tells youtube that other people should find this video or that they might enjoy watching it. and i want as many people as possible to learn how to play the pokemon trading card game let me know in the comments below what you think of this video if you enjoyed this series and uh, i'll see you next time